Okay, my name is Marie. I'm from Sri Lanka. I've lived in England for 50 years. I'm a Catholic and not non-practicing Catholic, but believing God. I'm an out and proud parent of Rima, who is in a same sex relationship. My name is Rima and this is my mom. I volunteer for Iman and they're a Muslim LGBTQI support group. We're based in London, but we work all over the UK. Culture and religion played, played some part, but not to the extent that I could actually turn around and say, no, if she wanted to be a Buddhist or if she wanted to have a relationship with the same sex. It's an independent decision she's made, and I'm proud of it. But our upbringing was quite strict, though. I wasn't really allowed to do other things that kids did, and I was sort of restricted a lot and that feels like it was to do with our cultural heritage mm -hmm. and the way you were raised I think you were saying. So my parents are very strict. Yeah. We don't go out in the evenings like mm -hmm. as much as you would go out to stay at home cooking and things like that but and that was it was not heard of. Yeah. When you say when you refer to you are not able to go out with the kids because I wouldn't let you go out because back at home it's always been school, home, homework, you know, in the, not home, boarding school, yeah. go to church, pray, and that sort of thing. And I was not trying to make them go to church or pray, but it's just come home, do your homework, and you don't go out because I did not like the way the children were behaving in, in, in uh, the area. And I think relationships were something that we didn't really speak about, did we? Yeah. It wasn't normal for us to just say. No, maybe not. Well, yeah. if I thought you were too young, I would not hear of it. Yeah. Um, until you were basically 16, at least. Um, yeah, it definitely feels like... It too... I mean, I didn't actually grow up and properly, really, really grow up until I was about 40. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you had a, you had a lot of restrictions on you as well. Didn't yeah, you? not restrictions. My mental state was still very, very confined yeah. to that upbringing. Work, cook, look after children. Yeah. That's it. I mean, that was always you know it was very, very restricted. Uh, I didn't know any better anyway. Okay, when I was a bit younger, I was a care away. I used to go out a lot, discoing and all that kind of thing. But that was when I was maybe 25. Yeah, the liberal stuff within you. It's it was there. It got it's shut down. Got shut down. Yeah. It's amazing how powerful culture can be. And, and these systems that we have to exist in sometimes, or we feel like we have to exist in. And then also a new come along, he's trying to set an example to you. I wouldn't have done anything like that after, you know, I had the children, didn't go out, did you? Except no. at family events, you go out. I've learned in life now, you've got to analyze this culture of yours and see what it's all about. What? I mean, do I agree with all that? Right. Do I agree? No, I don't. <laughs> so I've sort of learned, I, I, I know, I would not put my culture before my children. Wow. I mean, you have to enjoy life. Really. You don't live for long. Mm -hmm. While you're here, enjoy what you've got. I guess that applies to everything, doesn't it? It does. But it is just a culture. Yeah. So take the good bits and leave the bits that That's you don't right. agree you with. You need to separate these things in love. Interesting. Okay, Rima came out to me uh, by saying 
that she had these flowers from a girlfriend. Because <laughs> I thought it was her previous uh, man friend that she had. I knew quite well as well. And she said, no, we have broken up and uh, I am now seeing this friend. We have, and I said to her, Yes, I asked her a question, but you know. Are you gay? No, I didn't say are you gay. I said, <laughs> did I say that? Yeah. You said you were gay. You, you just, just came out of it, and I liked it. You just, you just asked. Oh, <gasps> I, is she gay or what? You know, yeah. that sort of thing. And uh, I said, is it flowers from so and so? You said, no, it's from a lady. And then, uh, then you said to me, you're going out with this girl. I said, uh, when did you go out? I said, I remember asking you. He said, have you been out with her um, a couple of times? Okay. I said, okay. And that was the end of, I really needed time to yes. think calmly without uh, freaking out. Freaking out. <laughs> I was not going to freak out. Because it would, would it was it wouldn't have been a such a big shock to me, really. Um, it just made me feel like, like, okay, if you're happy, then I'm happy. That's the most important thing. Because if you are in a relationship that you're not happy, you're not going to survive. But if as long as you're happy to me, you know that's what I thought, and uh, that was okay for me. That was good enough for me. If it's good enough for her, it's good enough for me. Yeah, I think she's come out all right in the end. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> she still come home for the curry. Of course. <laughs> My curry's rubbish. <laughs> uh, I, uh, now I feel it's funny. I'm, I'm at peace now because she's happy. She's settled. And I'm quite peaceful. There is, I think, that it's gone down okay. Yeah. yeah. We've been out together. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, they, they came to me last year for my birthday um, and we met at home and we got on all right. Yeah. Got to meet each other, you know, which is most important. Uh, just looking at this girl on the, on, the, on the phone is of no use. You've got to meet someone to get to know them. And once you get to know them, then you know, you're not going to judge anyone. You just got to get to know them. You be friend. Was I'm it, a friend. Is it hard? In the beginning? No, no. It's important for an out and our proud, proud pair, a parent to be visible because um, I just want to show them. Um, there's nothing to be ashamed of. It's, it's a part of life and you have to accept it. You know, I am what I am and she is what she is and you are what you are. And we can all live together peacefully, in harmony. There's no need to sort of point your finger at anyone. That's how I look at it. And my advice to a parent who is struggling with the child to accept, the child. to accept their child who is in a gay relationship, mm -hmm. yeah, is to find some sort of um, other find other people who are in the same situation. You can go online these days. You know, that's easy. You can just go online and see if you can find other people who's got the same problem. Discuss it, talk to them, try and understand it like I did. Try to understand because it is nothing too different, really, than a man and a woman and two women or two men. It's a relationship which can go right, it can go wrong. You know, try and understand. I know culture-wise, culture 
it was not the done thing. But if you had a choice, if I had a choice back then, I mean, I would not be here sitting with my daughter. She would be outside and I will be inside. And she will be on her own, suffering, in pain, because she has got no mother. And if you're not there, you know, um, I, I feel I would have lost a hell of a lot. So get out there, talk to people, see if you can find someone who's in the same situation. Try to understand um, how it feels like for her as much as it is for you. Talk, talk to each other. Mm -hmm. If it is at all possible, through someone else, bring a mediator in if it, you know, helps, you know. Um, I think uh, that is the only thing I could say. Speak to people. Be open with your feeling. Talk to your, is it your son, your daughter, your neighbor, whoever it is. Don't lose them. Because once you wash your hands off, then you've lost that child and there's no going back because she or he needed your support and you didn't give it to her. You lost it. But is it what is more important, you know, to keep your child? No. Or lose that child? You went through all the trouble of delivering that child, bringing that child into this, in this world you nurtured it from then, and now you want to lose it. Talk. It's very important to talk. My message for an LGBTQ plus young person is to be yourself um, as far as you can. And just know that you're not alone. There is a community out there for you. You just need to, um, you just need to find us. Um, if you go online, type in a bit about who you are, which group, type of group you'd be looking for, it's likely you'll find a group that will work for you. Um, make friends, get to know people who are going through something that's similar to your story. Um, share your journey. Um, only share as much as you are able, because sometimes it's really hard to, uh, to speak about this and to, to come to terms. With, your, with yourself sometimes. For me, self-acceptance has been um, one of the hardest parts of this, actually. Um, accepting myself has almost been uh, harder than, than the parents' stuff, to be honest. What makes me proud about Rima is that um, with all this going on around her, she is still uh, pursuing her job. Yeah. And that makes me very proud because she's, it feels as if she's kind of settled down now and everything seems to be falling into place. Yeah, And I'm very proud of that fact, yeah. yeah. My message to my daughter is, I still love you for all what you are doing, your naughty work, you know, but I love you for what you are. And if you've got any problems, oh, Mm -hmm. I'm still there. Thanks. <laughs> my message to my mum is I'm really grateful for all your support. I think you've been really, really brave. And um, let's just keep talking about it so you feel even more comfortable. And ask me questions anytime if you start to feel awkward or you want to explore it more. And I'm always here for that. Time is a healer, they say. Mm -hmm. Still in two years, aren't we? Two years. Yeah. So we'll keep going. Mm -hmm. We'll be all right. Yeah. Who knows? I might even be invited to the wedding. <laughs>